This is the AMS DMX 1580S digital delay from the late 70s. And this is the AMS RMX 16 digital reverb from 1981. Used by legendary producers such as Martin Hannett, Martin Russian and Brian Eno, and by artists such as Joy Division, The Human League, Peter Gabriel, Prince and countless others, both of these units helped define the sound of the records of that era. And in fact, demand for the RMX in particular has not waned over the decades, leading to the creation of an official plug-in version by Universal Audio in 2014 and a hardware reissue in 500 format in 2020. But today we're going to go back to the original units and see what they're all about. So the way I'm going to demonstrate them is to create a song and then use the DMX and RMX to process sounds within the recording to give it a vintage production twist and I'll explain what I'm doing as we go. First up for drums I'm going to go all Phil Collins which is something I'm going to do a lot in this video. Uh, ideally I'd have a Roland CR78 which is what he used for the intro of In The Air tonight but I've got the earlier Roland TR77 which is pretty similar and mine also has MIDI so that I can program a beat. Dry and with no effects, that sounds like this. Nothing particularly exciting, but I'm going to use the DMX to transform that vanilla sound. A quick note, I'm using the 1580S, which is the stereo version of this unit, but the original version in 1978 was just called the 1580, and it was in mono. That unit was the world's first microprocessor controlled digital delay, so it's pretty significant. Um, so I'm going to feed the mono TR77 signal into the stereo DMX 1580S, and then I'm going to delay the left channel and right channel by a small amount. 25 milliseconds on channel A and 15 milliseconds on channel B. Next, I'm going to tune channel A slightly flat and channel B slightly sharp. And in total, the delay and detuning will give us a chorus effect. So let's listen to the before and after. Okay, so that works as a little loop to give some rhythm, but for the main drums, we're gonna to turn to the RMX. Now this is a digital reverb that has 17 programs and you can cycle through those with the nudge buttons or by tapping the program numbers in manually on that iconic keypad. There's pre-delay and decay time that can be nudged or tapped in and then a decay filter which has high and low settings that you can boost and cut. Some programs only have the high setting available. Now, whilst I've got this rare unit in my possession, I thought it worth firing a drum machine through a few of the programs so that you can hear them. Now the program we're specifically interested in is called Non-Lin2, which is an abbreviation of Non-Linear2. And that is a reverb that doesn't decay in a natural linear way, hence Non-Linear. 
Instead, it either stays at the same volume before tailing abruptly, or at certain settings it even crescendos before tailing abruptly. Essentially, it's like it's compressed to the extreme. Now, I believe this is based on the sound accidentally discovered when Phil Collins was recording at Townhouse Studios in 1979. It went on to become the thing to do with your drum recordings in the 80s, and the RMX obliged in making that far easier to set up by giving you a program of it at your fingertips. Prince was a big user of this exact sound, as were countless others. So without further ado, here it is in action. Before we move on from drums, and whilst I've got these wonderful and rare units, I wanted to go back to the DMX to show you some more features. So you can feed some of each channel's output signal back into the input via a knob labelled Regen. Just like many other delays at lower settings, this basically allows you to control the number of repeats, and at the higher settings it starts self-oscillating and going totally bananas. In between, you can find some interesting effects, particularly as the DMX has an oscillator section that contains a voltage-controlled oscillator, or VCO, and a crystal oscillator, or XTEL, that can modulate the delays with differing results, and you can control the speed and depth of those oscillators. This is something Martin Hannett utilised very effectively when producing Joy Division's Unknown Pleasures, but I'm going to give you an exaggerated example. <laughs> It's pretty cool, huh? But wait, there's more. You can sample and loop with the DMX because the way it creates the delay is by recording it into digital memory and then replaying it. Now, Martin Russian used this for a very particular purpose that is now totally obsolete, so I might be the first person to bother doing this in some years, but basically, he would record a drum sound into the DMX like so then lock in the contents of one of the delay lines before it disappears so that the drum sample is effectively saved. Then you use the distinctive keypad and nudge buttons to edit the start and end points so that you're isolating your snare sample. Uh, you can digitally retune it as well. But better still, you can trigger it, and not just from the keypad. Any incoming audio that's loud enough will fire off the contents of that delay line. Uh, somewhat ironically, I'm going to use a drum machine to trigger my drum sample, uh, like this. Martin Russian used this to create bespoke digital drums because the Lin drum machines that he was using at the time only offered fixed samples on EEPROM, so this technique meant he could make his own. He also used this for instrument loops like the bass ostinato in Fascination by the Human League. Okay, moving on, we're going to dust off our old friend, the Yamaha DX7, and I've got this FM chime sound.
I'm going to fire that into the DMX and use delay, regen and pitch shifting to create this mushy loveliness. Moving on to vocals, taking the chorusing setup we already covered earlier in the video uh, and tweaking the settings, we can get the automatic double tracking or ADT effect that producers started using back in the 60s with tape, but that was still very popular in the 1980s. So here's the before and after on the lead vocal. Domine, thine image made echo. Domine, thine image made echo. This also works well across backing vocals, so here's a before and after of that. And if I can't reach, you lift me, my love. Okay, so I'm going to add some more instruments, some poly stuff from the Roland System 100M that has the DMX on it. Some guitar that is coming in direct from the ART TPS2 preamp that then feeds the RMX reverb on an auxiliary send on my mixer. Here's a before and after. And then finally some synth bass and some bits and bobs that don't use the AMS units just to fill out the rest of the track. Let's sit back and listen to the whole effect with the RMX and DMX units in action in my track now that you know what they're doing and see if they impart a bit of vintage production flavour. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.